All right, let's get into it here. What is our graph of our absolute value function? So let's start with the most basic one. Here's our equation. Y equals the absolute value of x. We're going to make an xy table of values and plot those points on our xy axis. Notation for absolute value, if you haven't seen it in a while, are these two vertical bars. Take the absolute value of x. That's how we're going to get all these y coordinates out here in just a second. Make a T chart. X, Y, table. I'll plug in some random X coordinates. I like to have a few positive and a few negative just so there's a variety of different coordinates to plug in. I plugged in some X values. Let's find these corresponding Y coordinates. All the Y coordinates we're going to get out are found by taking the absolute value of these individual X values. What do you know about absolute value? Let me start with that. Absolute value. Two lines. What's that? That's the two vertical bars rotation. What else? <laughs> it's the same number, just the opposite. Or it makes everything positive. Makes everything positive. Okay. What else? Why does it make everything positive? What's the definition of absolute value? Absolute value mathematically is a distance from zero. So, for example, would I ever say that West Des Moines is negative 10 miles away? Talk about distance. Negative 10 miles to West Des Moines. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. No. Absolute value measures the distance from something. Distance from zero. Distance is always positive. It doesn't matter which direction it is. It's either above zero or below zero. It's just a distance from zero. For absolute value. So how far is negative 2 from zero? 2. two. That's why, like the sense of it, it's always positive. I'm taking the absolute value of a negative number. It's just the positive part of it. Is the absolute value of positive 2 any different than negative 2? No. So positive 2 is still 2 away from 0. What's the absolute value of negative 1? One? 1. 1. When I plug in negative 1 for x, the absolute value of negative 1 for my y coordinate is positive. Do the same thing for 1. What's the absolute value of positive 1? How far is 1 from 0? One, 1. How about 0 itself? What's the y coordinate for when x is 0? 0. Yeah. zero. Absolute value of 0 is 0. 0 is 0. It's, it's at 0 already. It's absolute value of 0. Now that we have a table, let's make a quick sketch. I'll draw the x, y axis. we have some coordinates to plot. This is like the coordinate negative 2 comma 2, negative 1 comma 1, and so on. We're going to plot these points and draw the graph. Let's start with this intersection, or the x and y axis intersect. It has a specific name. Do you remember what that's called? Refer to the O. Origin. Very good. This is the origin. We're going to start from the origin and plot these individual points. Negative 2, comma 2. So for the x-axis, I have an x value of negative 2. And the origin is that right or left 2? Left 2. The y value is positive 2. That's the vertical axis. Is that going to be up or down 2? Up. You know it's up because it's positive 2 for y, and you know it's left because it's negative 2 for x. Okay. So from the center, left 2, up 2, make your first dot. This point is on the graph of our equation. Let's move to the next point. Negative 1, 1, very similar. Left 1, up. 0, 0 is the origin. There's the first half points. <clears throat> Where's 1, 1 going to be at? From the origin, how do I move to 5 at this point? Right, because now it's positive 1 instead of negative 1 for the x coordinate. Right 1, up. Right 2, Oh. And we can kind of see a pattern here. Sketch the graph by connecting some of these dots. There it is. The graph of y equals the absolute value of x formed by plotting those in total points. What do you notice? Let's talk about this graph. What stands out to you? 
it's about a right angle. That might change based off of how we set the slope here later today in the T-mark. But for this one, it's about a right angle between those two lines on the left. Describe the overall shape. What does that look like to describe the shape? Right, two arrows looks kind of like what? What letter? I think I heard it. Every single absolute value graph would be shaped like the letter V. Two arrows branching off to the left of the what? Someone said it's symmetrical earlier today. What does symmetrical mean? Yeah, you can fold it over and it'd be the same. Yeah, they're like kind of divided right down the middle, the two parts on the left and the right. What happens in the middle? Both the lines meet. Doesn't it kind of change direction too? I'm going down from left to right on the first half, then I go up from left to right. The numbers are decreasing in the table, then they're increasing. It changes direction here at this point changes direction at this middle point. This middle point has a specific name. It's called the vertex. Where the absolute graph, absolute value graph changes direction, that point is called the vertex. Why does it have to change direction? Two, one, zero, we're going down. Why isn't this number negative one? If it's just going to continue in the same pattern. Of distance zero. And distance is always positive. positive. All right. What's the smallest absolute value I could ever get out? Zero. The smallest absolute value you could ever become is zero. What number has an absolute value of zero? Zero. So this is the minimum point on the graph. Because there's no number that I could ever take the absolute value of and get out anything that's less than zero. The graph is always on the top half of the xy uh, axis because it's always positive. Okay. The vertex is either a maximum or a minimum point. How about this case? Is that vertex? Maximum or the minimum? Is it on top or bottom? Minimum. minimum because it's on the bottom. Yep. If the graph opens up, the vertex is the minimum on bottom. Later on tomorrow, when our graphs open down, which you'll see later today and tomorrow, that vertex will then have to be on top, be a maximum. Okay. Let's adjust it a little bit. Let's graph it up. I want to get really good at picking out the vertex and identifying some transformations for these absolute value graphs. So y equals the absolute value of x plus 1. Look at these two equations. What do you notice? What's changed? How is that extra 1 on the end of the graph going to adjust our table and therefore adjust our graph? Let's talk about that. Let's see what happens. I'll just plug in the same handful of numbers. Let's find all the corresponding y coordinates for these handful of x coordinates. Start with negative 2. What's the absolute value of negative 2 that we just did a second ago? Two. 2, but now i got to add 1 to it, so now I say 3. That's the value of negative 1 is 1. Add 1 to that again for our equation. Plug it in 0 for x. Find the y coordinate. The absolute value of 0 is 0. And I add 1 to get 1 for y coordinate. The rest of the table is just the same, just symmetrical. 
put the vertex in the middle. The table should match the top half of the table should match the bottom. Compare those two tables. What do you notice? Those two X Y T tables. What do you notice? To what? Y coordinates. All, all the Y coordinates in the second table just one more than what they were in the first table. I did that because now I added one at the end of my equation to adjust all the Y coordinates. Looking at, before I even make the graph, where would the vertex have to be at? Where are you? The center, right? Zero comma one. Is there any way to get out a number for Y that's less than one? No. So that's going to be the vertex. Looking at the table, you can find the vertex. What's the smallest Y coordinate possible? In the middle there, that's going to be your vertex, right? All right, so let's get this plot. Negative two, three, negative one, positive two, zero, one. So just up one on the y axis. And it's the same mirror image here on the right. Answer the question I was going to ask just now. It's the exact same graph. It's now shifted up. What's the new vertex? You need a full coordinate. What comma kind of what makes the vertex? See? Zero. Zero. Like we just said, by looking at the table, by analyzing the graph, that vertex in the point has it moved up one to the coordinate zero. This number on the end of your equation moves the graph either up or down. Let's try to. I want to sketch the graph of this function now. Y equals the absolute value of X minus 3. Y equals the absolute value of X minus 3. What I want to do, what I want to get to is a point where you guys can look at the equation and find the vertex. Let's practice that now. Vertex is the minimum point on the graph. What's the smallest absolute value possible? Zero. Okay. So I want to make this part of the graph zero. I want to make this part of the equation zero in order to find the vertex. What number minus three makes zero? I want to take the absolute value of zero to make it as small as possible. So inside this quantity is x minus three. What number for x minus three makes zero? Three. So wouldn't the vertex have to start with an x coordinate? In order to make this equation as small as possible, I want to take the absolute value of zero. So what do I plug in for x inside this quantity to make it into zero? What number minus three is zero? Everyone just said three. Easy. When I plug in three for x, what does the y coordinate have to be to complete that vertex coordinate? Even before making the table, even before looking at the graph, I know the vertex is three comma zero. Perfect. Now let's just get the rest of this information. Because three is the vertex, I'll put that in the middle. Let's find a few more points to plug in. Numbers that are less than three, a few numbers that are greater than three, like four and five. I know if x is three, y has to be zero, because you just answered that. Now let's plug in the rest of this. 
treat these absolute value symbols like parentheses. Order of operations says I got to do that part first. Subtract three from x and then take the absolute value after that to find our line point. So plug in one for x. What's one minus three? Yeah. Negative two, and then the value for our y coordinate would be two. Plug in two for x. Two minus three is negative one. And take absolute value. Take a guess. What do you think the y coordinates are on the bottom half of the table? Just the same again. Yeah, it's symmetrical. It's just a mirror image like I talked about. You can always find them by plugging in four and five if you need to. Four minus three is one, and the absolute value of that is one. One, two, right one, up two. Two, one. Three, zero is right three on the x-axis. Four, comma, one is right one, two, three, four, up one. Kennedy Weedman, please report to the secondary office. Kennedy Weedman, report to the secondary office. Five, comma, two. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's your grip. What do you notice? Uh, it's all the way on the right side. Okay. How's the graph shifted? Like Sophia just said, it's shifted which direction? Right by how many? Shifted right three. Aren't all these x coordinates? Three more than what they were in the first table of values? Yeah. Two plus three is five. One plus three is four. Zero plus three is three. I'm just adding all the x coordinates <coughs> to get the same y coordinates that I started with. And like we said, the vertex is at three comma zero. Questions you guys have so far? This number in the middle changes the graph horizontally. What do you think would happen if I make it x plus 3 instead of x minus 3? Maybe less, but I'm saying probably still right. Okay, that's a good point. How did we get 3 here? Let me put it back the way it was. Why does this vertex have to start with 3 and not negative 3? Okay, vertex means minimum. What's the smallest absolute value I can ever get at? Zero. So what number minus three makes zero? X minus three. Now let's change it to positive. I want to get out of zero again. I got to make the vertex on the bottom. I got to get out of zero. That's the smallest possible. What number plus three makes zero? So now how is it shifted? Not right three, but you just change the sign. You just change the direction. Take a minute here. Find the vertex of those three, and we'll talk about your work. I put three equations on the board without even sketching the graph. Could you pick out what the vertex has to be? Stuck. 
compare back to here to these graphs. This first equation, is it more like the equation here in the middle or this one on the right? Middle. So how is this negative 4 going to affect the graph? But which direction is it going to shift, though? Is it shift it vertically, up and down, or horizontally, left and right? Vertical, right? This number on the end changes all the y coordinates, so it's going to shift the y coordinates either up or down. The Is this negative four going to shift the graph up or down four? Up. Down, down four. It's going to take the absolute value of x and then just immediately subtract four to find the y coordinate. So it's going to make the graph move down four. But it doesn't have to be positive? Not always. This was just positive, so it went up one, right? Or if I had a negative four here, would it just shift the graph down four? Is that what you're thinking about? Vertex should be zero, negative four. Try the next two. What's there about number three? Uh, Got both, right? You gotta change it both directions, horizontally and vertically. And with left and right, and move it up and down. So why don't you share your answer for the second one? Um, negative six. Okay. Left six, yeah? Think about how we're going to get negative six. The smallest absolute value could ever be is what? Zero. So I want to make this quantity into zero. I want to make it as small as I possibly can. The absolute value. The absolute value. What number plus six is zero? What number plus six is zero? Negative six is the opposite. Anyone got number three yet? Feel like they. Are coming their answer? Yes, sir. Uh, one and negative three. One comma negative three. Tell me how you got one. Um, negative one plus one is zero. Mm -hmm. So if this number needs to be as small as possible, what number minus one makes zero? One. So if this is zero, what do you have left over for y? Negative three. What thoughts do you guys have? What questions do we have? Can you do one more for me? Of course. Oh, I'm kidding. What's about understanding? Okay. So, what happened? Huh. It's a second day of math class, Mary. Would it be. Oh. Um. Um. Make this as small as possible. Negative six. Negative six. Negative six. What's a real common mistake people make? Positive six, positive six. You gotta switch the sign in the middle to the opposite in order to get it back to zero. If there's anything people move up on this, switch the sign of the x.
do it backwards. I gave you the equation, you found the vertex. Well, the other way around. There's the vertex, we have an absolute value equation that has that given point. Close, so you take away the negatives for the next order. What absolute value equation will have a vertex of negative 3, comma, negative 8? Take the vertex and the match. You got an answer for me? It's got to be y equals, y equals x plus Plus three, okay. Because what number minus three makes zero? I gotta make this part of the equation as small as possible. What number minus three is zero? Positive three right there. What comes next? Got it. You guys got it. All right, a couple takeaways from today. What shape does the graph of the value function have? It's got a V, right? It's got to change direction. What do you name the point where it changes direction at? Vertex, yeah? That vertex is either on top or bottom. We talk about how to find the vertex a bunch of different ways. Looking at the table, looking at the graph, looking at the equation. I like it. Why don't you guys grab your laptops and we'll do something online here.